I'm about to feed them to the sharks right now. Get them hype right now. Yeah. You know the ground is up. Yeah. Everybody that trains, you know the game. Yeah. So let's get it. Uh. Slap it up, bump it, and roll. Hey. Yeah, that's the way that it go. Right. Ain't no better way to better yourself in this game. You're feeling the growth. That's it's time on the mat. We put in the work. Believe it ain't easy, I know. know. But we train for the love of the game, the love of the art. Now slap it up, bump it, let's roll. Let's roll. Welcome to episode 66 of the BJJ Campaign Podcast. My name is Jeff Boone. I'm an A3, blue belt, three stripes. Phil Coors, A2, blue belt, two stripes. Happy New Year to you and all out there, Phil. Thank you. You too. What's different so far in 2020? Everything. Have you seen the Facebook posts by people who are saying like, I haven't been submitted all decade yet? Thoughts? Blew that one first day. Yeah, it's a cluster. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was 14 hours, so it wasn't 12. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't think I was submitted right at 2 o'clock, but it was shortly thereafter. I did. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, because we rolled together first. And, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I did. That's right. That was a tough day. You were rolling in Will. That was, <laughs> I was a tough, I don't know how long I rolled, but it felt like a long time. A long time. Yeah. It's a long time. It's so funny, too. At the end of the rolling session, I rolled with Karen. She's like, you're all sweaty. I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. My, I, I, I give credit to my bald head because it sheds water and sweat quicker. Mm. Therefore, you know, whenever you're on top, you can just strategically place the head so it drips off the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shake. Yeah, I try yeah. to get it in their eye, their yeah. mouth. Just get whatever advantage I can. That's what jujitsu is about, right? That's right. Cheating. Smart. That's what I do. <laughs> Yeah. That was fun though. <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun. Uh and we got some good training in over uh the holiday. We were closed the the fight to win was closed down, but I think we had open mats almost. I believe it was every day. Was it every except Christmas? Was Christmas day? No, it was I think it was the day before Christmas there was none because I know Joey opened like oh that's right Christmas. he did open it yeah. yeah that's right it was every day pretty much yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I took awesome. those two days off and yesterday due to my Wednesday was tough your what my Wednesday was tough New Year's Day you ended up recovering from that yeah. hangover well the rolling hangover I guess <laughs> uh, yeah yeah um so what else? What? Oh, well, I'm dealing with a little bit You're of... You're dealing with a shoulder thing. Shoulder thing, yeah. yeah. Well, it's not a shoulder thing. It's a neck thing. Okay. That's a shoulder thing. Yeah, that's also that your is, back. I've got a pinched nerve in my neck, which is causing when my... And I'm going to try to describe this for you so that I don't have to use hand movements, Phil. Mm-hmm. Whenever my head goes down and is put toward my right shoulder... Mm-hmm. Anytime that happens, if somebody's putting pressure in that manner, I get a sharp shooting pain and numbness down my entire right side of my body, mostly in the right arm and hand, and have to tap. So if somebody else was experiencing this, what would you tell them? I would tell them to go seek help, which is what I did. Right. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Blake and also uh, Matt Crandall with... um, Physical therapy, dry needling, doing the physical therapy exercises. Um, neither one of them told me to take off of jujitsu. Therefore, I haven't. Do they know you wouldn't do it if they told you? Okay, maybe they said you should take off jujitsu, but I know you won't, so don't worry about it. Mm. Maybe that's what they said. All right. Okay. If If you knew somebody was going through it and you were like, oh, man, do you think right now training every day is is worth possibly making this injury worse and last longer or or. i took yesterday off Mm -hmm. i'm not talking about you i'm talking about somebody else like a hypothetical i'm not a doctor phil okay nor do i play one on tv so um hmm it's a tough question what would your advice be It's tough because I don't know if I would listen to it either. What would your advice be then? (sighs) 
This is what I was asking you. I wasn't ready for you to throw it back at me. I did just that. Is, is Matt actually a doctor, though? Matt? No, he's a physical therapist. Blake's a doctor. Okay. Did they did they actually say though? Like, and Rich, I saw Rich's counsel as well. Yep. And he said, if you're not experiencing weakness in that right side, then it's okay. So it's not okay because it goes numb and then you can't feel things and it's weak. Hmm. So that would make it's it not, not okay. how I choose to look at it. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I can't. What? Okay. Here, so let's go. Let's attack this from another angle, right? This is jujitsu. Yeah. So let's think of it from another angle. What am I to gain from not doing jujitsu during this recovery phase of which I don't know how long it would take mm. if I didn't do jujitsu. You're to gain recovery. What if it was three months? What if the, yeah, but okay. So say it takes three months and then you're healed versus it just never heals. We would be going against our advice before which is do what you can which i am doing what i can't and by the way i am you know if somebody gets me in that side control position or in the triangle position and my head's going towards that shoulder i'm tapping immediately mm -hmm. not i'm not i'm not risking further damage in any position that i'm doing as soon as i i feel that tingling or that nerve impingement i tap now does the tingling mean like it's a warning or does that mean like there's damage being done? The tingling from what I understand means that you're impinging that nerve, meaning that you're something is rubbing up against that nerve. Uh, how do you repair those? Do you have any idea? Well, you've got like Matt said, you know, you got to decompress the neck and get the, get the, um, uh, uh, God, I can't remember the name of it is, uh, fluid in the vertebral spaces losing it i don't know what you just Can't. even said fluid in the vertebral spaces the, oh. not cerebral spinal fluid the padding in between your vertebrae anyway whatever it's it's compressed in a way because my body mechanics and my posture has not been great with rolled over slouched shoulders and kind of a head forward position uh now that i realize because we're both reading becoming a supple leopard and right we're going to be supple leopards at midline some point. bracing Midline bracing. That's right. And good posture. So that's, you know, I don't remember what the question was. You, I was asking how it fixes itself. Oh, or how does your body heal from this or how do you fix it? So with the exercises that he's doing and it's assuming, through strengthening. Yeah. It's through strengthening and the body's going to heal itself. Yeah. Inside out. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. With the, the proper exercise, proper decompression, proper, bracing of your spine because i was asking if when the when the numbness is happening and you lose feeling you know and there and now that specifically you said weakness which i'm going to tie together with weakness. numbness yes you did I, I didn't say i was having weakness you didn't say that no i figured that out on my own because you won't say that so when i've felt when you reach in for grips on my neck they're terrible they're very weak yeah. Childlike grips. Yep. So true. There's something going on. So it's my grips in general, but yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if that's, it, you know, the numbness happens and that's damage occurring, breaking it, setting you back versus um, just like a warning, you know? Probably a good question to ask somebody. Not me. Yeah. Hmm. We haven't talked about it much, you know, True. you just kind of deal with the injury. You don't really complain a whole lot. I do. No. You, you know, I, I'll just, I'll, I'll just bitch about things a lot more than you do. Yeah. I tend to see the, uh, everything half full. Yeah. I'm thinking my left side stuff is going to, my off side is going to get a lot better during this time of training. Probably. Hope so. I hope it's for something. Yeah. Well, I mean, it will, but I'm just curious to see um, when the right side is going to get better, if. Oh, it will. You know. It will, definitely will. 
I mean, it definitely will. I mean, I'm, I'm doing exercises. I'm doing, uh, um, you know, at least 15 minutes every day, like they said in, uh, in the book uh, of different stuff pertaining to that very issue in addition to what Matt has given me for, for physical therapy to do. And, um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm doing everything I can with the exception of taking off jujitsu and that's just not, that's not an option. Okay. I don't know if I would either. Yeah. I don't think you would. I think we'd have the same discussion and I would understand your point of view with that. Yeah. Because you're old, you know, I worry. Right. I, no, I know. I worry. I know. I know. My nerves aren't healing as fast as they used to. Um, I wonder if they can do stem cells or anything in that. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's go down to Panama City and get some stem cells. Yeah. Um, <laughs> moving on, moving on. So, Phil, you asked this to me earlier, and I'm going to put this back on you, and that is... If you were starting over with jujitsu, what would you focus on first? What would you tell yourself to focus on first, knowing what you know now, but absolutely knowing nothing about jujitsu, just of where your journey has led you to now? Yeah. So this was kind of stolen because we were talking a little bit about a question John posted on Facebook, which I thought was interesting. Yep. And then that kind of led me into this thought. Um for myself, I think the biggest thing, um, I think, I don't think I could see any other way that I would progress than the way I did, which was, I always was put on the bottom. So recovering to a closed guard was always the most important thing. Cause it was the one I latched onto, um, and then progressing from that point. So closed guard would be like the first thing I would, um, focus on with myself. What I would change though would be to stop worrying so much about submissions because that was all I cared about, you know, like trying to figure out the, the triangle and the cross choke and all those other things. Um, and to focus more on the sweeps, but I guess, so that would be the same thing, um, that I would tell a new person would be the same. What I hear John tell the kids all the time, get on top, stay on top. That is in my opinion, the most important thing to focus on and because I think putting it in a self-defense perspective, or even when you're just starting out, like if you can keep figure out how to get on top and stay there, that's the most important thing. And I think what I did was get comfortable only being on my back and kind of latch there. So I think between takedowns or sweeps and kind and guard passing, that doesn't answer the question at all. Doesn't answer the question no. at all. But what I'm kind of diagnosing from this is that you're saying really all guard. You're not just saying close guard because sweeps you have to. Most sweeps happen yeah. in open guard. Yeah. Right. I mean, so yeah. you're talking about playing guard first. For myself. Yeah. For yourself. I don't think that'd be bad advice. Yeah. But then you went off on another tangent and said stand up. It felt like because got, it's burned in my brain. Felt like you got confused a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no, nah, it's burned in my brain now that that that's not okay to just stay there. Yeah. Okay. So, so I. Th that's why I thought it was interesting to take like so your that's, perspective. That's what you. So okay, let me ask this: Would would you say this is someone who has zero grappling experience? Um, of any kind and as a regular build person, say 175, 180 and they're starting, is that the advice you give them? Get on top, stand top or close or close an open garden sweep. Which, which advice? Well, that's the same is use the guard to sweep to get on top. Yeah, but get on top, stay on top. Doesn't mean working on, your top game. Because mm. that's what you're saying by that. You're saying sweep and then get on top. Well, what if what if they just happen to be really good at sweeps to begin with and they're on top all the time? That's different. Mm. 
Who who's really good at sweeps? I don't think I don't think people walk in and are really good, right? Yeah, nobody. Nobody. You're right. Hmm. I think you have to do guard, right? It has to be closed and open. Yeah. To to learn the sweeps. And okay, things. so I put the it's, I kind of tricked you, right? Because I changed the question on you. I put the question of to you, what would you say to you? Then I said to what would you say to a normal person? It's the same. It, it, I think I think you have to start. I think the first thing learning would be the close guard and then work to sweeps from there. What I'm saying I did was I started focusing on submissions from the close guard and then got overly focused on it. Mm -hmm. And that was all I focused on. Mm -hmm. Um, I think um, thinking about sweeps with the intention of advancing the position to a better, you know, advancing to a better position. I think that is a, a smarter approach. So you're, self-defense purpose and everything else of, of controlling the posture in the closed guard. Um, because most of the time I was in the closed guard, people just had their head up and I had a hand in the collar where theoretically they could just easily punch me in the face. You know, right. I, I, you know, quote unquote had posture control cause I had a hand in the collar. So if I brought my legs in and pulled, I could control, but it wasn't always, you know, controlled, which theoretically, you know, it should be. Um, so having the posture control in the closed guard, the distance control, and then open with the intention of advancing the position versus just a, a collar choke, I think would be the first, you know, the best way. Because when you can't stay on top and they roll you right back off, you know, you're right back there. So now you need to do it again. You know, I would say that would be the first place I would think is the most important to start and work from there. Because you know, you hear it all the time in the, in regards to like UFC fighters and stuff like that. And how at the moment wrestlers have the biggest advantage because they dictate where you are. And mm -hmm. I think that's what sweeping and a guard allows you to do is choose, you know, depending on the situation where you want to be. So map, map it out then. So it, again, and this is back to your own game. If, if you were to be very specific and because you know that you can't work infinite amounts of moves or anything like that, um, what what would you say specifically? Let's say, give me um, six. Give me. You know, let's see. I'm trying to think of the first three months. If you could get six moves, six. Um, Moves, concepts, or positions, or grips, well, any of those, what what would you say you would tell yourself to think about? Mm. <sighs> um, a single leg, a half guard, a bottom mount escape, probably elbow escape, because that's the easiest, I think, uh -huh. to manage. Uh-huh. Um, a half guard recovery back to guard. Huh? Which is in turn kind of the side control recovery back to guard too. Same. Yeah. Same el elbow escaping kind of concept back yep. to a close guard. Um, probably just cause I think it's the easiest to hit bump sweep mm -hmm. and then the scissor sweep. Mm -hmm. Cause that should kind of get into different variations where you're just putting your feet in. Mm -hmm. Um, I lied. Elevator sweep instead of a scissor sweep because that's going to involve getting the hook in and kind of get you used to that. Okay. Because I think that's more um, applicable everywhere else uh -huh. using a hook versus totally just kicking them over. Um, yeah, you familiar with that butterfly position? Mm hmm Yep. I know. I think I understand what John's doing there. And then uh, um, a half guard passed him out. Why half guard pass them out and not guard pass them out? You're probably going to end up in half guard before, like off the sweeps and stuff. Or right. off a takedown or whatever else, like the person. Half guard, yeah. You know, just, just getting familiar to getting pa advancing past those positions that are super common. I think that'd be an efficient way to learn. I'll be honest with you. Because like, I, mean, I, I, 
I don't like it and I suck at it, but the single leg seems to be agreed upon by everybody is the most important takedown in jiu-jitsu. I mean, Will was just talking about the other day. I mean, you were telling me that before the competition and I didn't want to listen. Nick said the same thing. Um, a lot of people told me that the single leg is the most important. Shocking. You didn't want to listen. Yeah, it's what I do. Um, so that takedown seems to be the safest. And for everyone with flow grappling, I would highly recommend going and watching. I think it's like 37 minutes. The Guy Mendez, they do a class um, with Guy Mendez and all he's doing is variations of the single leg slash ankle pick for the 37 minutes teaching a regular class. So that's on flow grappling. It's, it's incredible. It's, it's got some great sets because it's really tough. It's, it's really tough to get in on a single whenever somebody's got gi grips and just showing how to kind of set that up and, and, and use those grips against them, I think was important. I'm going to, I'm going to probably rewatch that dozens of times over, you know? Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think that's great. I think, I think it's smart and, and going back, um, if I were to tell me, what to do it would be it would be first get uh, a guard pass and probably I would I would tell if we're talking specific movements I would say to focus on the knee cut pass for the very first thing and then from that work on all those other steps so just substitute knee cut pass for single leg because I was already very familiar with the single leg. Mm-hmm. Knee cut pass to, to get past guard. Yeah, I kind of skipped close, being in the closed guard completely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, obviously, you, you in order to do the knee cut pass, you have to break guard. I mean, there's multiple steps to that. You got to break guard, go to your um, tactical base. And uh, what was, it, was it tactical? What was it? From Tom, tactical lift. Is how Ta- it says oh, tactical up. lift. No, no, combat base. Uh, <laughs> headquarters. <laughs> headquarters. <coughs> and um, and do the kneecap pass. And then um, the, the place that I would differ from you on sweeps is I would I would first focus. I would say focus on the flower sweep because it's the safest sweep from guard. Mm-hmm. You you know the. The only thing that happens if you don't get it is you reclose your guard because mm-hmm. it's a very, very safe sweep. Yeah, and that's, I mean, looking at the list outside of the single leg, that's just things that I always do, you know, that I'm comfortable with. So that's why the list seems like it makes sense to me, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I, I would use the hip bump because to me that one's just easy. Which it is. You're really, I mean, I remember the first time you did the hip bump sweep and I was like, that's better than the hip bump sweep I have now. <laughs> you know, that, yeah. that, that, I mean, that's why I think, you know, to me with, with getting up that way, I don't know that, that to me, I think I could, it's just the easy one to do where you just get up. No, sure. I mean, because then, then, you know, you're going to see other pathways off that too. And by the way, I don't disagree with the mm-hmm. hip bump sweep. Yeah. I, I, I don't disagree. I, and I'm just all. saying instead of the flower, like flower to me, and I know John says the same thing. It's one of the best sweeps you can do. Cause not only is it so strong, but it's so safe. You yeah. don't lose anything. Yeah. You know, no, exactly. that's which I'm exactly. agreeing with. Um, so I think I would, I would substitute that flower sweep for, for that hook sweep. Um, we were talking about, and then say, um, hit bump because then that gets you, in and familiar with both the guillotine and Kimura positions, mm-hmm. right? Those are things. And looking back on it, those are things that uh, that I like to do. Not necessarily guillotine, but the Kimura. Um, doing that. Um, and, and also, I would add one other thing, and that is... Um, that is just the concept of distance management whenever you're in half guard. That's the other thing. Whenever you're in bottom half guard, distance management. That's what I would, that would be the last thing I would focus on. Hmm. So one half guard thing. What? I don't know. 
That seems tough for the first three months. Of, um, I don't know. It's, a, it's six moves. Well, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know about distance management. One. That, one, that one seems, yeah, those don't, those don't work with me. I wasn't That's, talking about you. Yeah, I was talking I'm, about advice well, to I me. Only, I'm only concerned with myself. So <laughs> obviously, so it's, That's we're why. talking about me now. So. <laughs> it's all about on, me. Back to me. So <laughs> nah, no, I don't. Yeah. I think that one would be tough, but I, I, I guess I agree with it. Um, I would look at it more from, cause elbow escape is kind of the same thing from the side mount, try to use it for guard recovery mm-hmm. from the bottom of the mount. Mm-hmm. Um, so all that would translate back to just getting safe to full guard, close guard. And then the top would, for me, would be to focus on the pass. I had five. I would put the OPA in there at six. Yeah, he teaches that one. Number one. It's in the first lesson. Yeah. And I'll, and I, I think... I mean, we should probably just go down first lesson the, list. Probably the striking standpoint, yes, because that's how you don't get punched in the face. Is trying to time that when you're in the bottom of the mount. From a grappling standpoint, I can't bridge people off. You know, like that. My bridge is used to set up the elbow escape. The elbow escape is the one I can get out with. Sure. You know, and that's just because I'm not as good. Hmm. So that's that's where I had that, but I, the oop is probably smarter self defense wise. Yeah. But then again, that that kind of goes back to using that bridge thing to, for a lot of your roles and like half guard or whatever. Mm-hmm. And my timing has just never been good on those. And I find the elbow it's getting better. The elbow using the elbow and the leg at the same time. Also, I'm smaller; it's just easier to sneak out. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always been kind of what I gravitated towards. I, I don't think you should be disappointed at this. I mean, I think. No, no, I'm just thinking I, I, like there's obviously so many different ways you could go. I don't think there is a wrong. I think you can make really good points for all of them. And I mean, we put no prior thought into this. This list is just, I didn't expect you to ask this question as a follow up to the one I, I brought up in the kitchen. But That's no, I think it's a good question. Like yeah. to put a list on it of, of like, well, it's five or six. Well, because that's what, pe- I mean, and guys, look, just if you're out there and you're just starting in jujitsu, I mean, this is our, th- this is the thought process and probably what you'll go through throughout your entire campaign in jujitsu. And that is, you know, um, depending on what kind of background that you have, if you have any at all, I mean, you, these are questions you have all throughout and, you know, we've, we've gotten guidance from, from great resources and, and, John and Ryan and Steve and Nick and Will and all those, all of our training partners, coaches, professors that, that we get the advice from and, and kind of form our own path. But hopefully what we're saying, maybe some of it, if you've got a month in or two months in, it maybe resonates with you, you know, in that, in that you're, it will help form what thoughts that you have, because it's hard to form those thoughts when you don't have the complete canvas in front of you. And God knows we don't have the complete canvas out in front Mm -hmm. of us, but we have been exposed to most everything so far, at least once. Right. You know what I mean? And so, so just to, to kind of put that together and think about a training plan and I, and I'll say this and I won't harp on it. Um, but you know, for me, uh, it was really important that I learned to play guard when, or maybe a little bit earlier than I did because I was comfortable in top position from wrestling and that sort of thing. And you have to go and go towards, and I would say as a general rule, just to go towards wherever your discomfort is and what you're getting stuck in. I think that's probably, that's probably the best advice that I could think of if you're just thinking of a general rule. Yeah. That is, that's not where I thought you were going to go with that. Usually you like to put time frames on things. Like like you said, like you want to do it a little bit earlier. I just think it's funny, but like you'll, you'll put so much pressure on yourself to like 
you'd be like, I'm already okay at this. I need to move on and do the next thing and get better at guard, you know? Right. Like, I think you just, I think you, I don't know. Because I want to optimize pressure. the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I no, mean, I, I know. Wanna, and uh, then you, you'll be like, I, you know, I'm going to do this for three months and this for three months and this for three months. And then two weeks later, it's, I'm going to do this for three months and this, but changes. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I mean, I do the same thing. I, I think of it's, course you do. I just think it's funny because I get to see it. Everybody does when when you say it. Um, but I, under, I understand what you're saying about playing guard. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it was in, it, it was important. I mean, I feel the same way about the top. I just it took me a lot longer to get there. Well, it's because you don't listen, mm-hmm. right? It's already been established, though. Yeah. I only listen when they're talking to other people. Apparently, no. it took me listening to John tell the kids to get on top and stay on top 4,000 times before I was like, I should probably figure something out. Seems like a good idea. He does say that a All lot. the kids that are on top seem like they're winning. Why don't I do that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a kid. What, are you kidding me? It's great advice. But then, like, and that's why I think the half guard pass is so important because, like, that's just where people get stuck. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the, and when you pass, they recover that half guard, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's that's, the, where yeah, you that's find step one. A lot. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, that's the first place. Yeah, and that's like if I'm rolling with somebody better, that's like my goal is like I got to get back, I got to get a leg out, you know, mm-hmm. and and try to get some some distance back or something, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's that's interesting. No, it's mm-hmm. I think it's really tough, and not necessarily a wrong way. You know, mm-hmm. I think if you did all like trying to come up with a all escapes to just kind of get back to to here and then, you know, don't worry about it. Like if you can get on top, you'll figure something out. I mean, just watching other people or whatever. I mean, that's should, you know, in theory be kind of easy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think really focusing obviously on escapes, defending, um, recovering. Yeah, and and I go back to I can't remember which episode it was that we talked about this before, but in a little bit different context, and that was, um, that was get get two moves from each position. I still don't think that's bad advice either. No, yeah, you know, and Jeremy Arell's thing with the the mind roadmap, mind map, mind map, mind map, um, kind of putting that together. Yeah, but no, I th- I think that's. I think that's good. And that's how you learn to kind of tie the things to the two things together. Cause nothing ever seems to work on the first try. True. I'm glad we couldn't give ourselves advice. Now to then I wouldn't have listened. No, I know you would. I wouldn't have, I would have but I would you, have never listened. You, I mean, that's stupid. I could choke people from the bottom. Why would I, why would I do all that extra work? I can mean, just do it down there. Skip all those other steps. I thought we were trying to be efficient. I've hacked this. They take me down. I just close my legs. That's it. You know, one, two. <laughs> then six months later. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, that's funny. Maybe my neck wouldn't hurt if I wasn't always trying to raise my head back up. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's hilarious. Moving on. I think we would beat that one to death. But I, do, I really do like that. I really do like thinking about that. I think, I think it helps. It helps in the progression of even where we're at today and, and thinking about things like that, you know, helps us moving forward. I've noticed lately that I'm in, like, uh, I think I'm getting a little bit quicker to, to recognize when the same thing is happening all the time. I think, yeah. I think before, you know, I, I can remember, you telling me like my feet were close together or close to yours or something um, before I understood any concepts of base parallel. And, and I, mm-hmm. I felt like you were telling me that for months, you know, oh, maybe a year. And it, like, it wasn't, and I didn't even notice it was happening, you know? And now, now when I get, I got swept and it's probably happened in the past, obviously, but I got swept the same way, like four or five times in like three or four days. And I was able to recognize that, you know, hey, I'm posting this leg and everybody's switching their hips on me. Mm -hmm. What am I doing that makes you want to do that? And what are you doing that makes me want to post my leg? And going back a couple steps. um, And I think that's hopefully a break. Like the faster I can do that, 
that's the, you know the faster you learn um 100 yeah where you where you're yeah. starting to see that but i think before there was so much that i was trying to take in you know you can only do yeah i mean you can only take in so much but um like that one particular sweep and i've talked about it with like three or four different people it's still going to happen but you know now i'm seeing it yeah well it's and the I'm, first part of it right recognizing it and then the, i'm having the same issue from a bottom half guard where i'm trying to do two or three things and i'm reaching for an underhook which i know better than but i just end up doing it anyway and then they switch their hips and kind of go into the reverse case of mm-hmm. position and start and i don't know what to do from there so going back to figure out why are they switching because nobody ever switched before you know mm-hmm. this, this didn't used to happen now everybody's doing it mm-hmm. i'm doing something that makes them want to do it and trying to trying to problem solve back a couple steps mm-hmm. um so hopefully that's a breakthrough for me in my training to problem solve faster which is always the goal yeah no totally agree or you could just listen to people um next topic this is a good segue for that next topic and that is Coaching while rolling. Let's talk about it in two different contexts, right? Is rolling with your peers, um, you know, obviously rolling with with um, folks of your same skill level, less skill level, more skill level, and then uh, rolling or not rolling, coaching with the kids during a roll. Yeah. Thoughts. Um, I don't listen. During a roll ever it's my problem it's true that um, my little test of that that was one thing i was going to tell you again lately is because you stopped doing it probably because i stopped listening to everything you said but you never correct me anymore no because i only correct the stupidest of the mistakes like whenever you put your feet together and i and i sweep you the same way with mm-hmm. the stupid little hip switch sweep mm-hmm. five times i'll be like hey man don't put your feet together yeah no yeah. but i've noticed you haven't you haven't been doing it for months and i think it's probably because i stopped listening no, no, maybe partially, but no, I think I, I, I think I, um, rethought this, you know, I, I think here's, here's my thoughts on it. And that is if you're rolling with a peer or someone, maybe a slightly less level, wait for, wait for their feedback. If they're doing something glaringly wrong, say, Hey, you might want to, you know, get rid of that crip or whatever that, that stuff's fine during, during rolling. But like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to coach somebody unless they ask me for the f- feedback, right? You know, mm-hmm. what, what's going on, uh, um, you know, coaching during the role. I mean, it's just not, not something that, that I do, but if they ask me, I'm going to, I'm going to give them the feedback and, uh, and I'll do this like, um, with Will or John or anybody, whenever they give me some, if I don't know what the setup was, and sometimes I do, you know, I'll be like, Hey, you know, whenever we're done and there's like 30 seconds in between the round, I'll be like, Hey, can you, can you show me that? Or if it's something real quick, right after I'll be like, Hey, can, after I tap, can you, before you start the next, before, Uh, before, you know what I mean? I'll say, can you just show me that setup real quick? I want to just remember that for, for muscle memory, you know? And that's only if time's on the clock. If time's not on, on the clock, that's a different thing. Like if it's an open map I'll, format. I'll, I'll usually ask like uh, quick questions in between. Like I was with, I was trying to sweep Will the same way with that fundamental open guard sweep. And he just kept stepping off my hook. So I, and I asked him one question real quick. You know, I was like, I can't remember the first one I asked, but, you know, you swept me because of X, Y, Z. And he's like, yeah. And then I said, and you were just stepping off the, the open guard hook because it was a shitty hook. And he said, yeah. And then we go again. You know, I'm just trying to verify that why what I was doing wasn't working because of these two things that I need to correct and go again. You know? No, I think that's a great one. And in that row, you guys, it was an open mat format and you guys rolled for like 30 minutes. So yeah, whatever. If you want to get deeper into that, yeah, you get deeper. But uh, and Will's great because he, he, he likes to teach and like, you know, he likes whenever it, he's asked, he likes to expand on and he's very knowledgeable. And, and so, um, yeah, I I think I would classify it in two separate things. A first, you know, if they're, if you're coaching them, make sure that they ask and want it. Right. I mean, because don't, I mean, some people are just there for, for different reasons. Like it's not, you know, they're just there for physical fitness or something else. They don't need, you know, 
they might have somebody tell them what to do at home. They don't need somebody to tell them what to do whenever they're doing jujitsu, mm-hmm. you know, unless they ask for it. Uh, Joey had me in a Kimura from top side control the other day or top uh, half guard. And I was like, listen, I know you're winning right now, but Tom the Blast says. <laughs> 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 On the other hand, I was defending the Kimura forever. And I was like, can just hurry up and finish this so I can learn yeah, how to let's defend get the next. Another position like, I, need to, I need you to complete the Kimura so that way I can learn how to defend the next part of the Kimura. Because <laughs> when Jeff gets this, I don't get out. <laughs> so I need you to get better at it so then I can figure out the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing, uh, in that context, funny, close training partners, like you train every day. Yeah. That's, that's fine. That's but you know what? In a different sense, that's not fine. I wouldn't say that to other people. I know. Yeah. That's what, yeah. th- but that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to yeah. give the audience the nuance to that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you and Joey, I train with every, every day. day. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. we know exactly what we're doing or trying to do. We're mm-hmm. going to end up in the same kind of positions repeatedly every day. Yeah. So. Right now, that's what we're working through. I'm forcing him to do half guard with me. Yeah. And he's doing the Hobbs and Mora <laughs> butterfly sweep. It's much different. Than what George says. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> um, you know, and, and I, you know, we go over this because, because a lot of people don't know and they're excited about jujitsu and, and everybody wants to teach what they learn, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, good that everybody should teach what they learn it's just you have to kind of follow some guidelines whenever you're doing it right i mean first make sure that they want to know yeah by letting them ask you or something like that you know second don't take time away from the roles if it's a time ground until after you know and just get it real quick if you if you want to be coached in some way in that way get the round in and then and then do it. That's going to be, you're going to be, you're going to have more benefit if you finish out the round and get in different positions and then figure out what it was that you did wrong. Then, then if you just stop and concentrate on that one thing for the rest of the round, because you're not, you, you're, yeah. you're not getting better with your training part. Your training partner's not getting better there too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I have, I think too, when they just make the comment about what it was versus trying to like demonstrate the whole situation again. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not going to happen during a roll, but like just a comment real quick of like, you're letting me post the hand. Yeah. Or in that half guard, you know, if you, you're passing that half guard, you have the lapel grip on the left hand and, and you're pulling them in, you know, after, after you pass it, you submit them. You know, if you say, hey, can't let me have that lapel grip on that. I mean, mm-hmm. th- th- things like that, those little quick, quick comments, little yeah. po- comments, pointers, I, I think those are okay. Because some, I like that because there's so many things that I don't understand are a big deal at the time. Right. You know, and that that is like you're focusing on the huge body motions that you forget little things. So th- those pointers specifically pertaining to me of like your head's down and your elbows are out. Like those, <laughs> those need to be said to me multiple times every day. 7,000 So is what the count is so far. Other people need to hear other stuff. That's what I need to hear a lot. Um, but yeah, so that those, those are helpful of like, Hey, you're losing this position. Like you lost the position four steps ago because you put your head down, like you did everything mm-hmm. right, but your head position was terrible. Yeah. yeah. But that's, um, and, that was one I got the other day. Good advice. Yeah. Really good advice. And like and going off on another thing, but like in the Tom DeBlas, um half guard situation when he's talking about the shield and like if they're past the shield or they control and dictate that, then they're winning. Yeah. You know, and you have to think of it in those terms because I don't sometimes. And thinking about that, getting past that shield, that's – that's whenever you're reaching for that underhook. Because- and that's when I'm getting swept. Yep. The same way. Yep. It's it's all the same place. And mm-hmm. it's just I'm I'm now just seeing mm-hmm. some of these things and Because he says if you're on bottom, you know, when that when that underhook is effective is when their head is above your head, mm-hmm. which I thought was a great concept. And that's something I've thought of in roles where I'm like, I'm I'm way past. I'm too yeah. far high. I need to get back down. Yep. That's right. You yeah. Know, and that's for sure. Again, but th- that goes back to now I've watched all the instructionals. I'm trying to do it. Now I just need, you know, I need to try to do it for a month. 
and then yeah. I need to come back and then I'll see what Three I months. what I need to see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but Two weeks. I go fail a bunch of times and oh, this is what I'm doing, this is where I'm getting stuck. I didn't hear him say that before. I, I wasn't at that point. Now I am. Put it back in and let's go. Yeah. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um Anything else, Phil? My list was better. Uh, for you. And yeah. for a new person, you didn't even have a takedown. I can't even do a takedown and I included one. You didn't even know what to look for when somebody was doing a takedown. That's what, that's astounding to me. Yeah. That's why you're a terrible teacher. I, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> um, so tell the folks how they can support us if they wish to do so. Uh, BJJCampaignPodcast.com in the store. And buy a rash guard. That's what I would get. Rash guard so so sweet. It's the best one. Um, we also have t-shirts and patches and sweatshirts. Um, Hoodies. Yeah, sweatshirt. Come on, man. Zip up hoodie. Whatever. Um, Instagram. We should start posting on Instagram more. I don't we know what to, to take post pictures on of. I never know what to take pictures of. You eating ice cream cake? That's what I would do. <sighs> That's a good picture. I should have taken a picture a of, of your corner of your mouth yeah. with that green icing in Man. there the next day. It was blue. <laughs> uh, the YouTube page where we have um, the podcast, if you like YouTube, share the podcast with your friends. If they like jujitsu, you can give us topic ideas. Um, what would your six moves be? I'd be curious to see what people thought. Ooh, yeah. Like if you had a lesson one with our two lessons, I guess it would be three things in each one. Uh huh. What they would be. And the order. I like that. I would have been a better. Better, better question, but we're shooting from the hip here, yeah, Phil. Yeah. Yeah. We can't come plan on. it. It's so hard to come up with ideas. Yeah. But I think that was a good a good follow up to to what we were talking about with the with the John's post. Yeah, agreed. I don't think there's a wrong answer. Yep. Oh, there's plenty of wrong answers. Just you won't know they're wrong. That's how long. I get away with shitty answers. <laughs> there's a wrong answer. <laughs> uh, and folks, if you're not out there doing something every day to make make yourself better, get out there and do it. Phil and I choose jujitsu. We hope you do too. To feed them to the sharks right now. Get them hype right now. Yeah. You know the ground is our. Yeah. Everybody that trains, you know the game. Yeah. So let's get it. Uh. Slap it up, bump it, and roll. Hey. Yeah, that's the way that it go. Ain't no better way to better yourself in this game. You're feeling the growth. That's, That's time on the mat. We put in the work. Believe it ain't easy, I know. No. But we train for the love of the game, the love of the art. Now slap it up, bump it, let's roll. Let's roll.